everyone welcome to our channel knowledge of friends subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for the latest update today we want to start with your class that is your chemistry here and that is your class 4 that we have to discuss and before that we had discussed the three classes which is of unit 1 which we had completed and that is the name of the unit we have is your uh, the solid state the second unit uh, we had started in the next last classes and that we have is your that is the name of the unit is your solution in the last class we had done many more the questions related to that as well as related to the solution we will just discuss we had discussed about the mole fraction molarity molality and as well as uh, many more things that we had done and in terms of it we had done many more uh, of the questions as well as i had given you the eight questions uh, as for homework as well before starting with this first of all it's the huge request from my side to all the viewers please go through with the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe to our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well now as you can see we will start with the topic which is your vapor pressure of liquid solution in this vapor pressure of a liquid solution what do you understand by this what do you, we have to go ahead first liquid solutions are formed when solvent in a, is a liquid and the solute that can be a gaseous liquid or a solid solution of gases in a liquid that have already been discussed that we had discussed here in this section we shall discuss about the solutions of liquid and solids in liquid the such solutions may contain one or more volatile components and generally the liquid solvent is volatile and the solute may or may not be soluble or uh, volatile as well in the same case we shall discuss the properties of only the binary solution and that is the solution containing the two components namely the solutions of like liquid and liquid and sol solids and liquid so that we'll discuss the first categorization we'll discuss here which is your that is vapor pressure of liquid liquid solution vapor pressure of liquid liquid solution so in a vapor pressure of liquid liquid solution that what we have to go ahead here here let us consider a binary solutions of two volatile liquid and denote that two component as one and two when taken uh, that uh, in a closed vessel both the components that would evaporate and eventually are equilibrium and that would be established between the vapor phase and the liquid phase let us the total vapor pressure at this stage be like p total and p1 and p2 that be a partial vapor pressures of the two components one and two respectively and these partial pressures are related to the mole fraction x1 and x2 of the two uh, components one and two respectively the french chemist that is your frank calls maria that frank calls maria that uh, maria that uh, raoult in 1886 gave the quantitative relationship between them and the relationship is uh, that uh, you know uh, that uh, about it that known as uh, the raoult's law which states that for the solutions of volatile liquid let's go ahead with the talk about the raoult's law here and that is a Raoult's law that we have to discuss here which is we have Raoult's law in terms of it uh, which is a stands for and the Raoult's law states that for a solution of volatile liquid for a solution of volatile liquid here that uh, will go ahead and that will further discuss about it as well so for a solution of uh, volatile uh, that uh, we have as liquid in the form of liquid here and uh, that uh, for a uh, for solution for a uh, uh, volatile liquid the partial vapor pressure the partial vapor pressure at each component 
of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in a solution so the route say uh, route loss they say start that for solutions of volatile liquid the partial vapor that uh, that a pressure at uh, the uh, each uh, component of the solution is directly proportional to the uh, that uh, that make uh, that a mole fractions present in a solution as well so this is for the a component here which we can say that and that is p1 is uh, directly proportional to x1 and p1 is equals to p1 not x1 and for vapor p1 not this is we have here is the vapor pressure of the pure component 1 at the temperature and that is uh, with reference towards it uh, that similarly for the component 2 we have that is p2 equals to p2x here x2 as well where p2x represents the vapor pressure of the pure uh, component uh, that uh, and according to the dalton's law if i'm talking about now the Dalton store of partial pressure is that uh, the total pressure that is P total over the solution space in the container will be the sum of uh, the partial pressures of the component of the solution and that we have here for the Dalton's law. In Dalton's law with reference towards it which we have stands for and that states that p total equals to p1 plus p2 this uh, that uh, substituting the value here for the p1 and the p2 that we get is your p total equals to x1 p1 naught which we had find out plus x2 P2 naught which we have find out here which is equals to 1 minus x2 P1 naught plus x2 P2 naught and where it is equals to P1 naught plus P2 naught minus P1 naught x2 so here following conclusions uh, that uh, uh, that can be drawn uh, the, uh, here from this equation the first that the total vapor pressures over the solution that can be related uh, to the mole fractions of any one component and the total pressure that over the solution varies linearly with the mole fractions of this component second here and that is the third that depending on the vapor pressures of the pure components one and two the total vapor pressures over the solution where in the same case we can say that uh, well, uh, with the same cases as i told you that is depending upon the vapor pressure on the pure component one and two and that was vapor pressure that over the solution decreases or increases was the increase of the mole fraction of component one as well where in the same case we can say that here that a plot of p1 and p2 versus with the mole fraction x1 and x2 for a solution gases and a linear plot that uh, being uh, in the linear form and that it passes through the points for which that x1 and x2 are equal to the unity and similarly and that is there or uh, for they can say that p dot uh, p total the versus with x2 is also linear the minimum value of p total is p1 naught and the maximum value of that is p2 naught and assuming the component that we have the volatile that can be cut the component second as well the composition of the vapor phase in an equilibrium with the solutions was determined by the partial pressure of the components and if uh, that is y1 and y2 are the mole fractions of the component here and uh, that is the component 1 and 2 respectively in the up vapor pressure and then using a Dalton's law uh, that of uh, partial pressure. So Dalton's law of partial pressure in terms of it if I am talking about here which uh, we have to discuss that we have here which is 
you have p1 equals to y1 p total and p2 equals to y2 p total and in general we can say that p1 equals to y1 p total okay so this is in the form of the general form now we will be going ahead with a question here that what we have to deal with it and which is also an important one as well so we have the question we have for pressure of a chloroform which is CHCl3 and a dichloromethane which is CH2Cl2 at 298 Kelvin are 200 mm Hg and 415 mm Hg respectively. We have to calculate the vapor pressures of the solution prepared by a mixing 25.5 gram of CHCl3 and 40 gram of CH2Cl2 at 298 Kelvin and that the mole fractions of each component in a vapor phase as well. So let's go ahead with the question. Vapor pressure of chloroform CHCl2 and dichloromethane which is CH2 CL2 at 298 Kelvin are 200 mm Hg and 415 mm Hg respectively. For the first we have to talk about it which is to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution prepared by mixing 25.5 gram of CHCl3 and 40 gram of CH2 CL2 at 298 Kelvin. That will first solve it out, and then after that, we'll uh, solve the second part as well. So, in the same case for this, that in a molar masses of CH2 Cl2, molar mass of CH2 Cl2 equals to 12 into 1 plus 1 into 2 plus CL के लिए 35.5 into 2 which is equals to 85 gram mole inverse so that we have a here which is more molar mass of CH CL3 that is equals to 12 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 35.5 into 3 and which will we have is your 119.5 gram mole inverse here okay in the same case we have moles of CH2Cl2 equals to 40 gram upon 35 gram mole inverse which is equals to 0.47 mole now for the moles of CH Cl3 which we have and that we have to go ahead and that is your 25.5 gram upon 119.5 gram mole inverse which is equal to 0 0.213 mole now total number of moles equals to 0 0.47 plus 0 0.213 which is equals to 0 0.683 mole and where x ch2 and cl2 which is a ch2 cl2 that is equals to which we have find out 0 0.47 upon 
0.688 that we had found in total. So here we will go ahead and that what we have to talk about it which is X C H uh, C L 2 here C L 3 which we have 0 point uh, that is your 47 upon 0 0.88 here and on the same references when we are going ahead here which is we have to solve it out it is in the form of the mole and that is small here as well in the same cases when we will go ahead which is 0 0.688 and when we have to talk about X CHCL3 which is equals to 1.00 minus 0 0.688 and which is equals to 0 0.312 as you can see by using these equations we will be going ahead further and that what we will talk about P total as well let's go ahead here so we'll go ahead with the P total that we have to find out in P total that is P total is equals to P1 naught P2 naught minus P1 naught X2 which is equals to 200 plus 450 minus 200 into and that is your 0 0.688 which is equals to 200 plus 147.9 equals to 347.9 here which is mmhg now we'll talk about the other question which is the second part of this only the question as i told you about it first we'll solve this and then we'll start with the second one second part of this so the second part of this question we have the question is as follows that is uh, we have to find out the mole fractions of each component in vapor phase so the second part we have mole fraction of each component in vapor phase so that what we have to solve it out let's go ahead with that as well and that we have to solve it out but in the second one here using the relation here which is your uh, that we have is your y1 equals to p1 upon p total and in this we can calculate the mole fractions of the component in the gas a phase y so where we have for this p ch2 cl2 equals to 0 0.688 into 415 mm hg which is equals to 285.5 mm hg the other we have p ch cl3 equals to 0 0.312 into 200 mm hg equals to 62.4 mm hg the third we have here which is by ch2 cl2 equals to 285.5 mm hg by 347.9 mm hg which is equals to here 0 0.82 that we have We'll go ahead with the Y CHCL3 is equals to 62.4 mm Hg by 347.9 mm Hg is equals to 0 0.18 here. In this, since CH2Cl2 is more volatile component than CHCl2, so we have P C H two C L two that is equals to four hundred and fifteen mm Hg and P C H C L three is two hundred mm Hg and the vapor phase in is that also uh, that is the richer in C H two C L two and by C H two C L two that is equals to zero point eighty two and by C H C L three is zero point eighteen. It may be thus be concluded that an added equilibrium phase. Uh, vapor phase that will be also rich in the component which is more volatile as well 
Now we will be going ahead with the further one that what we have to discuss here which is the another one and in the reference towards it if it is important towards it that as uh, we had solved it out the question as well so here in the respective question wise if i'm going ahead so we'll talk about the another topic here and that is the second topic in reference towards it and that we have here has been as follows which is the raoult's laws uh, as a special case of henry's laws that we have to talk about it so let's go ahead with that as well which is we have Raoult's law as a special case of Henry's law. In this, according to the Raoult's law, that the vapor pressure of the volatile component as a given solution is given as like P1 equals to X1, P1 naught and in the solution of the gases liquid and one of the component is so volatile that it exists as a gases and we have already seen that its solubility is given by Henry's law and that states that is your in the form of P equals to KHX. In the same case, if we compare the equation for the Rolls law and the Henry's law that can be seen that the partial pressures of the volatile component is directly proportional to its mole fraction in solution and only but pro that proportionality constant kh that differs from p1 naught and thus it is Rolls law uh, that uh, becomes a special case of Henry's law in which kh becomes equals to p1 naught as well. Now we'll go ahead with the third one that we have to talk about it which is the another one and that is vapor pressure of solution of solids in liquid. Vapor pressure of solution of solid in liquid that we have to talk about it. We are in the same case here another important class of solution consists of solid that dissolves liquid for example the sodium chloride that is the glucose urea and cane and the uh, sugar cane as well as uh, the water and iodine sulfur dissolved in the carbon disulfate some physical properties uh, that of these solutions are quite different from those uh, that uh, you know those pure solvent and for example that vapor pressure we can learn in this unit uh, that we had done in uh, unit 4 uh, unit uh, class uh, 9 and that uh, liquids at a given temperature vaporizes and in the equilibrium condition the pressure that exerts by a vapors of a liquid over the liquid phase is called the vapor pressure in a pure liquid the entire surface occupied by a molecule of the liquid non-volatile solute is added to a solvent that gives solution and the vapor pressures of the solution is solely from all the solvent alone and the vapor this vapor pressures of a solution at a given temperature is found being lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at the same temperature that of the solution the surface has a both solute and a solvent molecule thereby the fractions of the its surface that is covered by the solvent molecules and gas surface covered by the solvent molecules to reduce consequently and the numbers of solvent molecules escaping from the surface is corresponding to reduced and thus the vapor pressure is also reduced as well in same cases the decrease in the vapor pressures of the solvent depends on the quantity of the non-volatile solute present in the solution and irrespective that adding 1.0 uh, like 1, 0, 1 mole of sucrose to 1 kg of water is nearly the similar to the produced by adding 1 mole of urea to the same quantity of water to the same temperature as well. So here the Raoult's law in its general that can general form that can be stated as for any solution the partial pressure that uh, with the partial vapor pressures of each volatile component and in this solution is directly proportional to its small fraction as well.
in a binary solution let us denote that the solvent by one and the solute by two so when the solute is uh, non-volatile only the solvent molecules are present at the vapor phase and contribute to vapor pressure as well here we have a linear graph representation for this and that we have as follows with respect towards it if i'm talking about here which is in the vapor pressures of pure solvent and that is in reference towards the mole fractions of solvent in terms of vapor pressure as well where the vapor pressures of the solvent x uh, y that be the its mole fraction and p1 naught uh, be the vapor pressures in the pure state and then according to the raoult's law we can say that p1 is directly proportional to x1 and p1 equals to x1 p1 naught that the proportionality constant is equals of the vapor pressures of the pure solvent p1 naught and a plot uh, between a vapor pressures and a mole fractions of the solvent is linear here liquid uh, that will talk about the another one which is ideal and non ideal solution ideal and non ideal solution in terms of ideal and non ideal solution that what we have to talk about it and which is here before starting with this that is the liquid liquid solution that can be classified into the ideal and non ideal solutions on the basis of the raoult's law here so here we will discuss about the ideal solution here terms of ideal solution that the solution which obeys Rolle's law that over the entire range of the concentration that are known as ideal solution the ideal solution have the two other important properties the enthalpy of mixing of the pure components to form the solution is zero and the volume of mixing is also zero and that is we can say that here which is your delta mix h equals to zero and delta max v equals to zero here delta of uh, max, h max as well that is equals to zero and v as well it means that no heat is absorbed or evolved by the component are mix and when the component are mix and also the volume of a solution would be equals to the sum of the volumes of the two components and at molecular level the ideal behavior of the solution that can be explained by the considering two component a and b and in a pure component that the intermolecular attractive interactions that will be of the types a a and a b b whereas in industry in the binary solution in addition to these two interactions a b type of interaction will be also be present and if the intermolecular attractive forces between the a a and a b b are nearly equals to those between a and b this leads to the formations of ideal solution and a perfectly ideal solution is rare but some solutions are nearly ideal in behavior solution of n hexene and n heptane and uh, that is a bromoethane and a chloroethane benzene and uh, that is your toluene that is uh, etcetera falls into this category as well so these work comes under the ideal solution i just write it down the name as well so that you will be write it down as well the solutions we have I, that shows nearly ideal a solution and that is solution of n hexane and uh, n heptane bromoethane chloroethane Then we have another one that is your uh, chloroethane benzene and your toluene. These comes under this category only. Now we'll talk about the non-ideal solution. terms of non-ideal solution when a solution does not obey Raoult's law over the entire range of concentration 
then it is called non ideal solution the vapor pressures of such a solution is either higher or lower than that of the produced by a rolled slow and if it is higher then the solution exhibits a positive deviations and if it is lower it exhibits the negative deviations from the rolled slow the plot of the vapor pressure as a functions of mole fraction for such solution that we have the cost for these deviations that lies in the natures of interactions of the molecular level in case of positive deviations from rolled slow ab interactions are weaker than those of between aa and ab and that is in the case same there the intermolecular attractive forces between the solute solvent molecule that are weaker than those of the between the solute and solute and the uh, that solvent and sol solvent as well molecules and this means that in such solutions molecules of a or b will be find easier to escape than uh, in pure state and this will increase the vapor here and that is a, that will increase the vapor pressures and results here and that is uh, results in positive deviation as well and the mixtures of uh, ethanol and a b that behave in the manner and a pure ethanol that uh, molecules are uh, hydrogen that bonds and on adding the acetone its molecules get between the host molecules and break some of the hydrogen bonds between them due to the weakening uh, interactions the solution shows that the positive deviations from rolls law and in a solution that formed by an adding uh, carbon disulfide and acetone and the dipolar interactions between the solute and solvent molecules uh, that be weaker uh, that are weaker than that the respective interactions among the solute uh, and solute uh, and solvent and solvent molecule this solution also shows the positive deviation as well in case of negative deviation from the rods law and that the intermolecular attractive forces between aa and a bb are weaker than the uh, those between ab and leads to decrease in the vapor pressure that is resulting in negative deviation an example of this type is a mixtures of phenol and that is your the uh, aniline and in case of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the that is your phenol proton and a lone pair on nitrogen atom of an aniline is stronger than of the respectively intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the similar molecules similarly a mixtures of chloroform and acetone forms a solution with a negative deviation from the rolls law and this is because of the chloroform uh, molecules is able to form a hydrogen bond with acetone molecule as uh, we will discuss here so first of all discuss with the examples here that we have here is the phenol and aniline in this we have a structure for uh, that we have for the chloroform and that is combined with acetone molecules as well so that is we have ch3 then c CH3 double bonded with O partial bond with H that is with CL CL3 this decreases the escaping tendencies uh, that uh, from uh, that uh, the escaping tendencies of molecule of for each component and consequently that uh, you know that the vapor pressure decreases the resulting in negative uh, deviations from the rolls law some liquids on missing mixing from uh, that on the azeotropes and which are binary mixtures and having the same composition in liquid and vapor phase and boil at a constant temperature in such cases is it not possible to separate the components uh, that uh, uh, you know that is components by fractional distillation and there are the two types of uh, azeotropes that cause minimum boiling azeotropes and a maximum boiling azeotropes and the solution which shows a large positive deviation from the raw stock from a minimum boiling azeotropes as a specific composition as well now we will discuss the one query uh, that is an example in terms of it and um, that is also an important one with reference to our set that what we have to go ahead here as well in the same cases uh, we will go ahead with other examples 
so here with the same cases that we have to discuss about it and uh, in, in the same references for example that is ethanol and that is the ethanol mixtures that is obtained by uh, fermentations of sugars and of fractional distillation gives a solution that containing the approximately 95% by volume of ethanol and once this composition known as azeotropes composition that has been achieved the liquid and the vapor that have the same composition and no further separations occurs here as well with the same case that the solution that shows the large negative deviations from the Rolls law that form maximum boiling azeotropes as a specific composition and nitric acid and water is an example of this class of azeotropes and which we have and that is the azeotropes has the approximate composition and 68% of nitric acid and 32% water by mass with a boiling point of 393.5 Kelvin as well that what we have let's go ahead with other one that what we have to discuss here which is the question I will give you provided you as a homework and that is the eighth question of the session that I had given you the seven question in the last classes so with the same eighth question that is the vapor pressures of pure liquid a and b are 450 and 700 mm hg respectively at 350 kelvin find out the compositions of the liquid make sure if the total vapor pressure is 600 mm hg and also find the compositions of the vapor phase as well that is the question we have and um, that you have to solve it out you can just comment it on as well the other uh, thing that we have to discuss that the other topic is colligative properties and uh, determinations of molar mass colligative properties and determination of molar mass in this here we have learnt in this that, that the vapor pressures of the solution decreases when a non-volatile solute is added uh, to a volatile solvent and there are many properties of a solution which are uh, connected with this a decrease of vapor pressure and these are the first we have relative lowering of vapor uh, that uh, you know that a pressure of a solvent and the second is the depressions of freezing point of the solvent and the elevations of boiling point of the solvent and the osmotic uh, pressures of the solution all these properties depends on the numbers of solute particles irrespective of their nature relative to the total numbers of particles that is present in the solution such properties are called colligative properties and colligative from latin that is co means to gather and ligative means bind as well in the following we'll discuss here so that is one by one we'll discuss uh, and that is the first we have here in reference to what it is that is relative lowering of the vapor pressure relative lowering of vapor pressure in relative lowering of vapor pressure that we have to talk about it in this that uh, that the vapor pressures of the solvent and the solution is less than that of the pure solvent Rawls established that uh, that uh, the lowering of the vapor pressure depends only on the concentration of the solute uh, particles and it's dependent on their identity and the equation that uh, will be discussing that to establish a relation between the vapor pressures of the solution mole fraction and vapor pressures of the solution solvent as well and that we have as follows which is P1 equals to X1, P1 naught. The reductions of the vapor pressures of the solvent, that is delta P1, is given as, which is delta P1 equals to P1 naught minus P1. This is equals to P1 naught minus P1 naught X1, which we have written is here. P1 equals to, and by knowing this, we have P1 naught 1 minus X1. Knowing that where uh, we uh, know this that x2 equals to 1 minus x1 we can say that x2 equals to 1 minus x1 and in the same case in the same cases we will we'll go ahead that is delta 
P1 equals to X2 P1 naught and in the same case in a solution that containing a several non-volatile uh, solutes uh, that the lowering of the vapor pressure that depends on the sum of the mole fractions of different uh, that uh, solutions that we have solutes we have uh, so the equations that can be written in the form which is delta P1 upon P1 naught equals to P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught and that is equals to x2 here we will further move ahead and that what will make a equation and then further solve it So we we go further and that the expressions in the left uh, that hand side of the equation has been mentioned earlier and the relative lowering of the vapor pressures and is equals to the mole fractions of the solute. So the above equation we can written be in the form of which is as follows which is P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught that is equals to N2 upon N1 plus N2 and we are since we can say that x2 equals to n2 upon n1 plus n2 here so here that n1 and n2 are the numbers of moles of solvent and solute respectively present in the solution for a dilute solution n2 is less than less than with n and that hence neglecting the n1 in the denominator we have that we discussed with p1 minus p P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught equals to N2 upon N1 and which is further equals to that is or we can say that P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equals to W2 into M1 upon M2 into W1 here. In the same case, here W1 and W2 are the masses of M1 and M2 of the molar masses of the solvent and solute respectively. And here uh, from doing all the component quantity and, uh, quantities uh, of the molar masses of solute M2 that can be calculated here. And now we will go ahead with the questions here that what we have to discuss here. The question we have which is the vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar. And a non-volatile, non-electrolyte solid weighing uh, that the weighting uh, weighing uh, 0 0.5 gram when added to 39.0 gram of benzene, molar masses 78 gram mole inverse, vapor pressures of the solution then is 0 0.845 bar. What is the molar mass of the solid substance that we have to discuss here? So here we will go ahead and let's go ahead with the question as well which is your the question of the session that we have is your sixth question of the session that we are dealing with so here we have a question sixth that is the vapor pressure of pure benzene certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar a non-volatile non-electrolytic non-electrolyte solid weighing 0 0.5 gram when added to 39.0 gram of benzene which is of molar mass 78 gram mole inverse vapor pressure of the solution then is 0.845 bar what is the 
molar mass of the solid substance so that we discussed here and which we have to find out and this has been the question which is in from us in CRT here. In reference to our search where we have that is the various quantities known to us as that is which is we have P1 naught is equals to 0 0.850 bar P equals to 0 0.845 bar and where M1 equals to 78 gram mole inverse W2 equals to which is 0 0.05 gram W1 equals to 39 gram that what we have to talk about it so substituting these values in the uh, that we had find it out for the equation here as well and which is to be as follows that we have 0 0.850 bar minus 0 0.8 4 5 bar upon 0 0.850 bar equals to 0 0.5 gram into 78 gram mole inverse upon m2 into 39 gram so where m2 equals to 170 gram more inverse that will be the right answer for this question now we'll deal with the other another question another ex, uh, that is your the topic we have to discuss that that is elevation of boiling point so in the elevations of boiling point that what we have to discuss here in this as uh, that the vapor pressures of the liquid increases with increase of temperature and if uh, both uh, at uh, the temperature at which in vapor pressures is equals to the atmospheric pressure for example water boils at 373.15 Kelvin which is 100 degrees Celsius because at this temperature the vapor pressures of the water is 1.012 bar and one atmosphere we have also learned that in that uh, last section that the vapors pressures of the solvent decreases in the presence of non-volatile solute the variations of the vapor pressures of the pure solvent and the solution as a function of the temperature for example the vapor pressure of an aqueous solution of a sucrose is less than 1.013 bar at 373.15 kelvin in order to make the solution boil its vapor pressure must be increased to 1.013 bar by raising the temperature above the boiling temperature of the pure solvent water thus the boiling point of the solution is always higher than that of the boiling point of the pure solvent in which the solution is prepared in terms of it uh, that is similar at the lowering of the pre vapor pressure the elevations of the boiling point also depends on the numbers of solute molecules rather than their natures and uh, we are uh, that a solution of one mole of the sucrose in 1000 gram of water boils at 373.52 kelvin at one atmosphere pressure and for that we have here we are uh, that is uh, this uh, let uh, t be of uh, t naught that uh, we have uh, be the uh, boiling point of the pure solvent and that tb be the boiling point of the solution and the increase in the boiling point which is tb naught uh, is equal to tb minus tb naught that is known as elevations of boiling point that is we have a formula here tb minus tb naught this is an elevation of boiling point experiments have to be shown that a dilute solution that the elevation of a boiling point which is delta tb is uh, directly proportional to the molar concentration of the solute of the solution that we have or we can say that so here that m is the molar uh, molality is the number of the moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of solvent and a constant proportionality where that is the kb is called here which is your the boiling point elevation constant and molal or we can say that molal elevations constant which is your ebullimoscopic uh, that is your constant as well the unit of kb is a k kg mole inverse and the values of kb for the some common solvent that we have and uh, even though we have
uh, gram, uh, the W2 gram, that of the solute of the molar mass M2 that is dissolved in the W1 gram of solvent, then the molality um, uh, that is of the solution is that to be given as follows here, which is M equals to W2 by M2 upon W1 in 2000 equals to 1000 into W2 upon M2 into that is your M2 into W1 here. So substituting the value molality in the uh, this that is we will get delta of TB equals to KB into 1000 into W2 upon M2 into W1. So here for that M2 will find out which is M2 equals to 1000 into W2 into KB upon delta TB into W1. We are thus in order to determine the M2, the molar masses of the solute, that known mass of the solute is known, a mass of the solvent is taken as delta TB is determined experimentally for the known solvent whose KB value is known here. For this we have a graph here that is representing This is your vapor pressure at 0 point, uh, sorry, 1 point uh, that is 0, 1, 3 bar or 1 atm we can say that. This is at T naught temperature and this is T naught. So here in the same case this is your T B here this is temperature. That is per Kelvin. So here we have where it is intersect. <coughs> so this is your the solvent. This is solution. So here this is which we have. This is your boiling point your boiling solvent and this is your solution which is point of solution this has been the vapor pressures that curve of the solution that lies below the curve for a pure water and this diagram will show that the TB that denotes elevations of boiling point of the solvent in a solution as well now we will be going ahead with the further one and that we have to deal with a question here and um, that we have 18 gram of glucose which is C6H12O6 is dissolved in 1 kg of water in a saucepan at what temperature will water boil at 1.013 bar KB for the water is 0.52 K kg mole inverse so this is the seventh solved question and uh, as I had given you the many questions for uh, you to solve and for you to practice that we are the another one it is 18 gram of glucose C6H12O6 is dissolved in 1 kg of water in a sauce pan at what temperature will water boil at 1.013 bar KB of for water is 0.52 K kg mole inverse this has been given in the question the KB of the water here so let's go ahead with the solution here moles of glucose to 18 gram by 180 gram mole inverse which is equals to 0 0.1 mole number of kilograms of solvent equals to 1 kg does molality of glucose solution equals to 0 
mole kg inverse and for water change in boiling point that we have to solve it out and that we have as follows as well and that is kb equals to kb into m 0.52 k kg mole inverse into 0.1 mole kg inverse and of course that is equals to 0.052 kelvin since water boils at 373.15 kelvin at 1.013 bar pressure therefore the boiling point of the solution will be uh, that is uh, the with uh, that we have boiling point point of solution will be 373.115 plus 0.052 kelvin and that is equals to 373.202 kelvin here so now we will be going ahead with further question and that is another one is your eighth question of the session and that is also an important one in reference towards it and um, that we have the question is the boiling point of benzene is 353.23 kelvin and when 1.80 gram of volatile non volatile solute was dissolved in 90 gram of benzene the boiling point is raised to 354.11 kelvin calculate the molar mass of the solute kb for benzene is 2.53 k kg mole inverse that we have to solve it here so let's go ahead with the eighth question of the session that is the boiling point of benzene is 353.23 kelvin when 1.80 gram of a non volatile solute was dissolved in 90 gram of benzene the boiling point is raised to 354.11 k calculate the molar mass of the solute kb for benzene is 2.53 k kg mole inverse that what we have to talk about it let's go ahead with the solution as well so here that is the elevation delta t b is the boiling point and that we have delta t b equals to 354.11 kelvin minus uh, 353.23 kelvin which is equals to 0.88 kelvin here substituting these values in here that is we will find it out m2 equals to 2.53 k kg mole inverse into 1.8 gram into 1000 gram kg inverse upon 0.88 kelvin into 90 gram which is equals to 58 gram mole inverse that we have to talk about it and therefore the molar mass of the solute we have and that is your m2 equals to 58 g mole inverse that we have here and that is in the form of an answer as well 
that will take about it now we'll go ahead with other question that we have to talk about it here and that is another one and that what we have to even the discuss about it which is the depressions of freezing point this is the another topic here depressions of freezing point so depressions of freezing point here and that what we have to discuss here which uh, we have to follow as well in this the lowering of the vapor pressures of the solution causes a lowering of its freezing point that compared to that of the pure solvent and the known that are the freezing point of a substance and the solid phase is in its dynamic equilibrium with the liquid phase and thus the freezing point of the substance may be defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressures of the substance is it, uh, in liquid phase is equals to its vapor pressures in the solid phase and that a solution will freeze when its vapor pressures equals to the vapor pressure of the pure solid a solvent as it's clear and that according to the Raoult's law when a non-volatile solid is added to a solvent its vapor pressure decreases and now it would become equals to of that to that of the solid solvent at a lower temperature and thus the freezing uh, point of the solvent decreases so let's uh, t1 not be the freezing point of the pure solvent and t1 be the freezing point of the non volatile solute that is dissolved in it and the decreasing in the freezing point as well so for that we have here H, that is we mean as follows that is delta t f equals to tf not minus tf that is known as the depressions of freezing point and similar to the elevation of the boiling point the depression of the freezing point uh, that for the dilute solution which is your the ideal solution is directly proportional to the molarity molality m of a solution and that we can say that here delta tf is directly proportional to m and delta tf equals to kf m here the proportionality constant kf which depends on the nature of the solvent is known as freezing point depression constants or molar depression constant or uh, that is your cryoscopic uh, constant as well we are in the same case we'll go ahead with a uh, graph here that you can have to understood about it which is in the form this is your vapor pressure this is your temperature in the same cases here which with uh, refer reference towards it which is we have tf and tf not so here we have this is tf not in the same cases So here in these if I'm talking about here which is the first the red one we have is your that is liquid uh, solvent this is solution this is your frozen solvent and this is your delta TF this is the diagram that showing the T uh, that delta TP depressions of the freezing point of a solvent of a solution as well. Where the unit of Kf is a K that Kg mole inverse in the value of Kf for some uh, common solvent uh, that we'll discuss here and uh, further. And then if W2 gram of the solute having a molar mass are uh, as M2 and that present in the W1 gram of the solvent and that produces the depressions in freezing point which is uh, that is delta Tf of the solvent and then molality of the solute is to be given us in the equation form we can see that that will be represented as m equals to w2 by m2 upon w1 by 1000 and substituting this value for the molality we have which is delta Tf equals to Kf into w2 by m2 upon w1 by 1000 and which is delta tf equals to kf into w2 into 1000 upon m2 into w1 which is m2 equals to kf into w2 into 1000 
upon delta T F into W one. So here, for this we have that we have to follow here, and which is in the reference towards it that what we have to talk about it, and uh, which is we have to find out the M two here, and that what we will have to go ahead with the, the thus for the determining. The molar mass of the solute that we show that the quantity is W1, W2, T, W2, uh, del T, delta T1, along with the modal freezing point differential is constant as well. In the same cases here for this, the values of Kf and uh, that is your uh, that is your Kb, which depends upon the nature of the solvent that can be ascertained from the following relation, and that we have here Kf equals to R into M1 into T1 square Tr square upon Thousand into delta fusion heat, where Kb equals to R into M1 into Tb square upon thousand into delta vapor H here. And here that the symbols that R and M1 stands for the gas constant and molar masses of the solvent respectively, and a T1, T, uh, F and T B that denotes the freezing point and a boiling point of the pure solvent respectively in Kelvin. Further, delta fusion H and delta vapor H represents the enthalpies for the fusion and vaporization of the solvent respectively. Here in that same case that is the molar boiling point elevations and freezing point depression constant for some solvent as well. That what we have to go ahead. We have to go ahead uh, with the detailed about our table as well. But uh, I think that is uh, you know that will it take it take times as well that to solve it out and that to find out and then we have to do a sol uh, that the questions also on those cases of this as well so that will de deal with it in the next coming class and uh, in terms of it if I'm talking about uh, some of the related things relate uh, this uh, we can do uh, one of the questions here but that takes uh, time so let's uh, okay uh, we will be going ahead with the table and then we will be doing a solution as well so let's uh, uh, do it in the next coming class and uh, for the boiling point I will just write it down if it exceeds it, so I will uh, switch it so solvent we have okay and then we have your boiling point for Kelvin KB per kg and uh, mole inverse freezing point and we have KB okay so that we have to talk about it for water it is 373.15 the KB is your 0 0.52 the freezing point failure that is 273.0 and for KF KDA that is 1.86 for the other that we have for solvent is your ethanol for ethanol that is your 351.5 this is 1.20 155.7 and 1.99 the other we have is your glyco, uh, cyclohexane. For this we have is your 353.74. This is 2.79. This is 279.55 uh, and that is 20.0 for the other one that what we have to discuss here which is for the ben benzene as well so in the terms of benzene that we have we have 353.3 this is 2.53 278.6 and 5.12 for the another one is your chloroform that is your for the chloroform we have 334.4 3.63 and uh, 4.79 another one we have carbon tetrachloride carbon tetrachloride for this we have 350.0 and uh, that is uh, the another we have is your 5.03 The other we have 250.5 and then another we have this last one is 31.8. The next we have carbon disulfate. And that is 319.4, 2.34, 164.2 
and 3.83 diethyl ether here this is 307.8 2.02 156.9 and 1.79 the another and the last we have is in the terms of it and that what we have to talk about it which is your acetic acid this 391.1 2.93 290.1 290.0 and 3.90 respectively that we have so first of all we'll end up here and uh, then we'll discuss the next questions related to this in the next coming class and that are many more things that we have to discuss which we'll discuss surely in the next coming class so first of all it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers please go through with the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well other than the chemistry we are dealing with the quantitative aptitude we are in the arithmetical ability we had done operations on numbers lcm and scf of numbers uh, and a decimal fraction and we had started with the fourth topic which is the simplification other than that we are dealing with the database management system and uh, we have dealing with the software engineering and we are dealing with the chemistry of class 12 as i told you about it and in the uh, terms of it, we are dealing with the reasoning as well in reasoning we had uh, started with a verbal reasoning we had completed that uh, that gen general mental ability in the logic reasoning part and other than that uh, we are dealing with the non verbal reasoning where we have uh, cover up the series more than 1000 question analogy more than 500 questions and classification that is more than near about uh, uh, we have more than 500 questions for that as well and uh, now uh, we had started with simplification so you can go through with that we had started in the last class only so we had cover up about approximately 50 questions there you can go ahead you can can find out through the playlist as well in terms of chemistry if i am talking about here uh, so in this uh, what we had cover up is your unit 1 which we had cover up and the name of the unit we have the sol the solid state and in the solid state we had uh, cover up uh, many more things related to this and that the topics we had cover up is your uh, the general characteristics of solid state amorphous and crystalline solids classifications of crystalline solids crystal letters and uh, unit cells numbers of atoms in the unit cells close pack structures packing efficiency calculation involving unit cells uh, dimensions imperfections in solids electrical properties and magnetical properties as well in unit 2 the solution which we had started where we had talk about the types of solution expressing concentrations of solution solubility vapor pressures of sol liquid crystal ideal and non ideal solution colligative properties and determinations of molar masses that we had completed now we'll start discussing about the abnormal molar masses and then we'll end up with that as well and the unit third we have to discuss about the electrochemical uh, chemistry which we have to discuss electrochemical cells galvanic cells nernst equation conductance of electrolytic solution electrolytic uh, cells and electrolysis batteries and as well as that we have to cover up the fuel cells uh, corrosion unit four is the chemical kinetics the rate of chemical reactions factors influencing the rate of reaction integrated rate equations pseudo first order reaction temperature dependence of the rate of the reaction collagen theory of the chemical reactions and other than that you have we have to discuss unit fifth which is the surface chemistry absorption catalyst collides classification of solid emulsions and collides around us unit 6 general principles and process of isolations of element which we have to cover up the occurrence of metals concentrations of ores extractions of crude uh, metals from concentrated ore thermodynamic principles of metallurgy electrochemical principles of metallurgy oxidation reduction and refining uses of aluminum copper zinc and iron the unit 7 we have the p block element which is a group 15 elements di nitrogen ammonia oxides of nitrogen nitrogen nitric acid phosphorus allotropic forms phosphine and phosphorus halides oxa halides oxo acids of phosphorus group 16 element dioxygen simple oxides ozone sulfur allotropic forms sulfur dioxides oxo uh, that is oxo acids of sulfur and sulfuric acid group 17 element chlorine hydrogen chloride oxo acids of halogens into halogens compound group 18 elements the unit 8 is here the d and the f block element which is positions in the periodic table electronic configurations of d block element general properties of the transition element of d block some important compounds of transition element the lanthanides the actinides some applications of dnf block element as well the unit 9 uh, we have a coordination compound where we have to cover up the warnes theory of the coordination compound definition of sub important terms pertaining in the coordination compound nomenclatures of coordination compound isomerism in the coordination compound bonding in the coordination compound bonding in methyl carbonylysis 
stability of the coordination compound importance of and applications of the coordination compound that what we have to deal with it so first of all it's a huge request from my side and then we'll discuss more over the unit that is from unit uh, 10 to 16 as well it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers please go through with the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even the, you can also enjoy the video as well so thank you thanks for subscribing us thanks for supporting us thank you it's a huge request those who had not subscribed to our channel those who had not like share and subscribe our channel please go through with the subscribe uh, our channel and please like share and subscribe our channel thank you hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please give a thumbs up and give a suggestion in the comment box thank you